In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to Firebase. So this is going to include using a new package, Firebase Core, and linking your app to Firebase for iOS and Android. Let's get started. So first, we can add the Firebase Core package by using Flutter Pub Add Firebase Core. And this should get us on Firebase Core version 1.3.0. That is the newest version at the time of recording this. Once you have that, you can see in your pubspec.yaml that you will now have that Firebase core. You can then run pub get. Now we have the Firebase plugin installed. We now need to initialize Firebase. So if we go back to the main.dart file, we're going to need to add two lines above this. The first one is going to be the widgets flutter binding. We need to ensure those are initialized. And then after that, we can await the call to initialize Firebase, which will look like that. Now we will need to add that package and we will also need to make our, um, our main async because we are now using await in here. So that is good, but we also need to configure Firebase with a new app in the actual Firebase dashboard. So go ahead to console.firebase.google.com and create a new project. This we will call the decider YT, and then we can continue here. We are gonna enable Google Analytics for this project. Select an account. All right, our project is ready. We can hit continue here, and it's gonna bring us into our project. So we are going to connect this for iOS and Android in this video. I'm not going to cover how to do it in the web because this, this app that I'm building currently is not going to be supported for web at this time. So let's start with iOS and we need to get the bundle ID. So if you go back to the project here and we can right click on iOS and then go flutter open in Xcode. Once this opens in Xcode, you can click on the runner. So once that opens, you can see the bundle identifier is right here. So you could copy that and we'll paste that in right here. The optional values here, we will just leave blank. So then you can click register. And now you're going to want to download this Google service info.plist. And we do need to add that into Xcode here. Within Xcode, we're going to add that file right into this runner folder here. So you can just drag that in and keep the these items checked and then click finish. I must have already had a download of this, so it got a one at the end of it. So make sure the name is just this. That is good. So we can go back into Android Studio here. And now if you go in the iOS file here and go to runner, you'll see that we do actually have that same, that same Google service info plist file there. So you could have added it there as well. The last thing we're going to do is open up this info.plist file and scroll down to the bottom. We need to add this copied code here right at the bottom. And this code I will link down below where you can get the copy of this. This is all based on the Flutterfire documentation. So if you save that and then go back into here and click next, we basically just did all of this for Flutter. So you can hit next there again, and you can hit next as well. And now you can continue to the console. So our iOS app should be configured and connected. So we will want to rerun the iOS app, which it is gonna use that Firebase initialization up here, which if all is working correctly, it will connect to Firebase here. But while that's running, we can actually just go ahead and do the Android one. So a similar thing, we need the Android package name. This we can go and get in Android Studio. If we go under Android app and then the build.gradle file. And if we scroll down a bit, we will see that the application ID is right here. And we do want to specify our own unique one. So add the YT to the end of that. We can remove this comment here. While we're in here, we're going to bump this min SDK version up to 21 and copy this over and then go ahead and paste it here. The rest of this we can just leave blank for now. This file we will also need to download. 
And back in Android Studio, we're going to add that directly to the Android app folder that we were just in. So go ahead and drag that on over there. And then we can click refactor and add. Since we bumped that minimum version, we do need to change the Gradle exception here to a file not found exception. And once we do that, that error should go away. Now our iOS app should be running. All right, so we are having some issues running the iOS version. So these are actually being caused by the deploy target being version iOS version 9.0. So we're gonna bump that up to 10.2. So this can be done in three quick steps. So firstly, we need to go to the iOS folder over here and then go to Flutter and App Frameworks info.plist and you'll see the minimum I, the minimum OS version is at eight here. So let's change that to 10.2. Then we're going to actually open up the pod file itself and uncomment this line at the top and change this as well to 10.2. And then finally, a bit further down here in this post install, we're going to add this line here. and also change this to 10.2. Once all that is done, we're going to open up the terminal and run a flutter clean. Then we're actually going to remove the podfile.lock and pubspec.lock. And actually we don't have, we don't currently have a podfile.lock, so it must have been removed in the previous step. Then we're going to remove the pods folder and the runner workspace. And then we're finally going to rerun the app. All right, and we do have one small error and it is in this info.plist file. I pasted this in the wrong location here. We need to have that with inside this dictionary here. So we can save that and try running it again now. All right, great. You can see the iOS app is now running. So we can go back to our Android setup now. So we're going to go back over here into our Android folder and we want to find the build.gradle file. Now this is a different build.gradle file than we were just using. This, the one we were using earlier was the one within the app directory, but now we are just using the one within the Android directory. So we want to look at the build scripts here and find the dependencies. And we want to add a new dependency here and this is going to be for the Google services. And we can just save that. Now we want to go into that other build.gradle file, which is in the app directory. And we're, we want to apply this plugin. Right here where we're applying these other plugins, we can apply this plugin, which is going to be the Google services plugin, which essentially is going to be using that JSON file from Firebase. While we're also in here, we do want to do one more thing and enable multi-dex. And this is going to prevent an issue that actually occurs when you try and run the Android, a Flutter app on Android. All right, so now at this point, we can try and run our app on our Android device. If we just go back into Firebase console here, we can hit next through all of this stuff because essentially we just set it all up. And now see we do have the two apps configured here. Both should be working correctly. So let's just make sure that Android app runs. All right, and everything looks good on Android. So at this point we are configured with Firebase, but really nothing substantial has been done yet, but Firebase core is now configured with our project. So in the next video, we are going to add authentication with Firebase. And then after that, we are going to be adding actual cloud fire storage to start saving information that's entered into this question field. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's gonna be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube for free are gonna be that base app, and this is part of that. But if you wanna see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, 
in-app purchases and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. And right now at the launch of this video, you can get the course on pre-sale with a 30% discount. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com backslash monetize. If you missed the pre-sale, no worries, you can still get a discount and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.